Hey everybody, welcome back to another Motivation Monday podcast for Monday, September 17th, 2018. Hope you had a great weekend. Thanks for making us part of your Monday morning. And thanks so much for tuning in like you always do. So this Monday, I wanted to talk to you all about a performance that I found on YouTube that I think that everybody out there has to watch, has to check out, and has to think about uh, in a certain way that I think will be really beneficial to everybody. So I, I managed to interview one of my favorite saxophone players on my other podcast called Everything Saxophone. And I managed to interview Miguel Zenon, who I think is one of the best musicians in the world today. Um, his saxophone playing and his writing and his teaching and Basically, everything he does, I think, is really second to none. Um, So I was really, really excited about getting to speak with him. And I think the interview turned out great. It's going to be published a little bit later on this week, on Thursday. If you'd like to check it out, it's called the Everything Saxophone Podcast. Uh, I host it with my friend and colleague, Donna Schwartz. And we interview some of the best saxophone players in the world and try to pick their brain and... um, you know, bring that knowledge to the people who listen. And even if you're not a saxophone player, I think that this podcast can be really beneficial for you. But anyways, that's just a little advertisement for that show, if you feel like you might want to check it out. Uh, But anyway, so I was watching a whole bunch of Miguel Zenon stuff on YouTube, and one of the ensembles that he's a part of is something called the San Francisco Jazz Collective, the SF Jazz Collective. And if you've never heard of this band, it is just fantastic. Um, There are members that rotate through this band, but the core group of musicians that plays most of the time is absolutely amazing. And then, of course, the the people that they bring in, they only bring in really world-class folks. And it's really great because they do all these different projects. They'll um, do the music of one composer for a season, and they're, they'll tour around and make an album of all the music of this one composer. But I found this performance that they did, and this is back in 2010, and the musicians on this particular performance are Robin Eubanks, Mark Turner, Miguel Zenon, Avishai Cohen, Stefan Harris, Edward Simon, Matt Penman, and Eric Harland. So a real kind of murderer's row of some of the best musicians out there that are actively playing today. Um, And I was just amazed at this video, and I think it's something that we should all watch and really observe to really hear how this band is functioning as a unit. Sometimes when we bring together these all-star bands, they're amazing, but they don't really function as a unit as much as I think that this SF Jazz Collective does. And I think this is probably due to the fact that they rehearse a lot and they really get their stuff together before they do their particular season of music. Now, in this concert, they're not doing music by one particular composer. Uh, They're doing a lot of stuff by Horace Silver, but then they also do a lot of stuff by the members of the band. So it is a mixture between Horace Silver's music and the original music uh, by the players. And there's a couple of things that I want you to notice when you watch this video, and I will post the video in the show notes for this episode. So make sure you hop on over to 10minutejazzlesson.com and find the video so you can actually watch it. But there are a couple of things that really struck me. So there's a bunch of horn players in this band, right? There's four horn players, two saxophones, trumpet, and trombone. And one of the things that I noticed about this is there's a lot of extremely hard parts of these tunes where maybe the horns are playing some kind of ostinato over a drum solo or a bass solo or something like that. And one of the things that really struck me was how good the time is as a whole in this band. We talk about time a lot on this podcast where, you know, even if you're a horn player and you think you don't need to have really, really good time because that's for those rhythm section guys, that's simply not true, right? Everybody in an ensemble, everybody that wants to be a jazz musician has to have extremely good time. So I want you to concentrate on, I think it might even be in the first tune or the second tune in the video, 
Eric Harlan plays this big drum solo, and the horns are doing these hits along with the rest of the band that are happening underneath the drum solo, and the time is just perfect. It's absolutely perfect. Everybody in this band, individually from each other, has absolutely perfect time. And I think that's one of the things that makes this band really stand out from a lot of other ensembles that I watch play that, you know, technically should sound just as good as them, but they don't, you know? And there's various levels to this extremely, extremely amazing jazz that you really start to see after you listen to enough of this music. It's like, you know, it can be an absolutely top-tier, world-class band, but it doesn't sound as good as other absolutely world-class top-tier bands. But this is one that I think really, really takes the cake. And and this ensemble is, can be a real inspiration to the rest of us as jazz being played on the highest level possible. So the solos are amazing. The, the other things that I was just talking about, things like time, things like blend between the musicians, and just how much fun they're having. They're having so much fun on stage together playing this music. Um, I really just think it's going to make you really happy, and it's just so impressive. And the uh, cinematography is really great, too, so it's almost like you're kind of in the room with them. And another thing that this ensemble has really embraced is getting really good footage of their shows or their rehearsals or them playing in the studio and putting it on things like YouTube and Facebook and all that stuff. So there's a plethora of material out there by this band for you to check out that's all really high quality and really, really well done. So I think this is one of those ensembles that you can really get to know, even if you've never seen them in person. And I actually saw them in person one time, and uh, let me tell you, if they're coming to a city near you, you have to go out and check out this ensemble. So I'd like you to watch the video uh, in the context of what I was talking about as how good everybody's sense of rhythm and time is. But then also there's a million other reasons to watch the video. So I guess really what I'm saying is I'm just really recommending that you check out this video. So again, it will be in the show notes. Just find this episode on the website and I will include a link to the video or you can watch it right on the website. And let me know what you think. Is this a band that you enjoy? I'm guessing that a lot of you out there already listened to this ensemble and are already big fans of this ensemble. But let me know what you think. If you're new to them um, and you watch this video, give me some thoughts. What are some things that you picked up? What are some things that you liked? What are some things that maybe you didn't like? Although it's going to be tough to find stuff that you don't like about this band. But let's start a little discussion about it. All right, we will see you on Friday with a regular episode. And we hope everybody has a great and inspired week. And I know you will after you check out this video. Talk to you soon. Bye.